is underway. Let's go to the picks and bands. All right, so we'll see. Will Sky show up in this draft at any point? But right off the bat, it's going to be the Kroll band from Equinox. Rising Lotus on the clock will take the Lyra off the table. So not either of those two going to be available. Kind of what we expect at this point now in the preseason. Expecting a Celeste pick here, maybe a Tony. Those are typically, these four are usually the first off the board. Yeah, definitely at the point in this patch now where teams have a good understanding of what works, what doesn't. Some teams like to mix things up. Equinox, not one of those teams with the first pick, though. Taking the Celeste, I mean, it's just such a strong pick right now. Yeah. The, 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 Immediately not? answered by the Tony. Tony, so again, Taka. These four, those four tend to be in these first four selections in some order. You know, the, who gets banned and who gets picked is usually jumbled up, but it always seems to be these four kind of rounding things out. And then Taka and Alpha, we talked about how they both fill a very similar role. So I like the fact that Equinox, once Taka was picked, they decide to take the Alpha for themselves so that Rising Lotus can't ban it away from them. Yeah, I really like that these European teams are not scared to take Alpha during this first pick phase. We saw it getting banned out in the second ban phase a lot yesterday. So teams are like, okay, if we're not able to get Alpha after that second ban phase, we need to take her during the first pick phase. Equinox taking advantage of that, make sure they get their hands on her. Fortress coming off the board as well. I think that's gonna try and set them up for a Samuel play. They don't wanna get body blocked. If Equinox, okay, they went and banned the Kestrel, I was going to say they could take Kestrel if Samuel got banned. I definitely expect Rising Lotus to take Samuel here. Yeah, especially because you want to have that strong mid laner to answer against the Celeste, and that's exactly the role that Samuel fills. Uh, you have that AoE so that it's also just, no matter what your opponents do, you have the range of the AoE, so it really doesn't matter what your opponent's team composition is. The Samuel will work well there. They're going to go for the Batiste, kind of going back to week one with the Batiste pick there. We'll see if it ends up being another weapon Batiste. I don't think we've seen a Crystal Batiste yet in uh, <laughs> VPL, so uh, I'm kind of looking forward to when we do get that, but weapon definitely has been the way to go thus far. Not taking the Samuel, old. Equinox could try and capitalize on that with the Churnwalker. That would have a lot of synergy if they try and go for it. It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do, and then as long as they can get some sort of hardcore protector towards the end of the draft. That will help keep those backline mages alive so that those carries don't even have to worry about Ataka getting on top of them. I was actually really hoping that they would grab the Samuel there just because the thought of a crystal alpha potentially going for that triple crystal composition with Heliogenesis and Empowered Malice and Verdicts all with a Churnwalker is a terrifying thought. Absolutely. Rising Lotus tanking it up though, picking the Grom Chai. I think that's the first Grom Chai we've seen this so thus far this weekend uh, for sure. So that's that's going to be some serious burst damage that Equinox is still going to have to watch out for. And uh, right now though, they're very much lacking in the range mm -hmm. department. It's four melee bruisers for the most part. So they're definitely going to need to make sure they're getting something so that they're not just getting completely kited away from the back line. Yeah, and you gotta look towards that mid lane and really the only option left that a lot of teams have been running would be either the Scarf or the Adagio. And I just, I don't know if Adagio would be the right pick in this composition. So very likely going to be the Scarf pick, but there's a, a potential for Equinox to take that away. It's highly unlikely. But if you know that that's really what your opponents are gonna be looking for, you could try and take it just to deny it, but they are going to go ahead and grab the Catherine. That is a seriously bruisy front line that uh, Rising Lotus, despite there's a Samuel coming in last pick. So they are going to have those AoE Malice and Verdicts able to put out a lot of AoE damage into those melees, but it's all going to come down to execution. We've got our heroes. So who are the players that we're supposed to be watching this game? Flash. For the side of Equinox, definitely going to have to keep our eyes on Alex SS. He definitely looked good throughout the first week. He definitely still has a lot of room for improvement. Here we uh, see him trying to do his best running away on the Lorelei. He definitely has a lot of room for improvement. He can definitely position a little bit better, making sure he's not getting caught out in these team fights. He's doing his best trying to frontline for his team, but he has to understand that he needs the frontline in a way that still allows his teammates to deal the damage from their backline. And very similarly across the rise is going to be Solicitude for Rising Lotus. Again, you know, when teams have struggled, it's 
if the players to watch need to step up. This is what we're why we want to keep our eyes on them. We want to see them performing at a better clip than what they have been doing thus far. And solicitude, you know, being that mid lane carry is one of the core components that needs to be performing well. If your mid lane carry is not step, is not playing to the best of their abilities, then you're not going to be getting many wins. Yeah, he's got to be paying attention to his positioning today. Getting caught out a little bit too much against Queso. Anytime you play against a top tier team, if you are out of position, you are going to get punished for it. Right, so both Equinox and Rising Lotus are struggling so far this preseason. So on paper, between the two of them, who has an edge? I think just on paper, you'd have to give the edge to Equinox because they're the team that has been able to pick up a victory. But from what we've seen in game, I actually feel like this one could go to Rising Lotus. They've had the much tougher matchups throughout the preseason, and they've been able to hold their own for at least a little bit against some of these top-tier teams. So I feel like the edge, just in terms of the way that teams have been playing, is on Rising Lotus' side. Yeah, I absolutely agree. They've had a very tough schedule. Definitely playing I, – I, have they played both Clash and Queso this far? I believe so. So, yeah, they, they definitely can step it up today. Oh. Okay, the game is on. Stress, Cass, and Dowsey. Thank you very much. Bit of a correction. Both these teams are 0-3. And one of them will come out of this with a win here today, Stress. So really important time to get that one up over each other. Uh, sorry to miscorrect to correct. Uh, Equinox do one correct. win to their name. Uh, they beat Wolves in the there first week. It's Rising Lotus and Wolves are 0-3. But it's okay. It is a hotly contested fight at this point. And uh, again, a little bit of a different start that we've seen. This is the, uh, the five-man brush start right at the beginning very popular in a lot of games normally you're feeling someone face checking oh dear not good stuff for rising lotus nomad vagabond taking a lot of damage but he will escape there now we will see equinox go on in so with equinox with a victory over wolves earlier on now rising lotus looking to try and get there first here I mean, Rising Lotus has had a tough start to the game. They've gone up against uh, uh, Salt of Potatoes. They've gone up against Clash, I believe. Both these teams are sitting up at the top of the leaderboard. Clash clearly one of the strongest teams in the EU. Uh, it's it's really right now with with so much experience on their table. You have the the likes of Nomad Vagabond, Diana the Coward, Cracks. All these guys have played at top level. Uh, they need to find their their footing here really in the EU. Yeah, definitely. And you know, on the other side. Equinox haven't had the easiest start for themselves. They had that game yesterday where they unfortunately had connection issues and ended up being a loss for them. But we did see one good performance out of Equinox. Against Wolves, they had the Celeste. It was looking pretty good for them. And they're in a similar situation here today. Now, I feel like this isn't going to be another quick game. I think we're going a little bit later on in this one. I think these two teams, it's probably going to resemble the Wolves Salty Potatoes game from yesterday where it's very scrappy, very back and forth. And that's where all of this crowd control is going to need to stay. You know, heroes like this Churn Walker, if you can get those multi chains off, if you can manage it in fights, that might be the difference maker. Well, we'll have to find out if the Churn Walker can do that on 5v5. I think he's been fairly lackluster so far from what we've seen. Yeah. But, uh, we're really going to have to see if Alex SS can do it. Uh, the issue is, like, Churn Walker on 3v3 was one of the strongest heroes and definitely was the, the hero that had so much influence at the Vainglory World Championships in December. But 3-3 is such a different game. Churnwalker has so much more to tank here, so many more chains to land, so much more to do, and it makes it so difficult. Bit of a fight breaking out in the mid lane, but it should be diverted. Alex SS, the one taking the brunt of the damage, will be able to escape Ooh. just about. But, you know, we, we heard from the desk that he, he's good at tanking up damage and he's good at being that front line, but if there's no reason to do it, then don't do it. Yeah, and it's going to be tough enough as it is to land without Tony running forward and landing in like a multi-person taunt <laughs> like with that cone out in front of you. Like, super difficult to make these team fights work. And Savantu now is going to be uh, trying to take away some of the enemy jungle. We'll run into Prax and Vagabond at this point. Yeah, seeing if he can't do some work here. He should be okay for now. Does manage to escape. Kieran was kind of just waiting, lurking, maybe setting up something, but he gets spotted by that scout came in the bush. Oh dear, mid lane, it's a dive, and it is going to be the death of Viking there as Alex SS next to go. Luger trying to come in to help out, provide the uh, peel that the captain needs here. But Keanu Cohen solicitude, oh no, Alex SS, Ooh. can he escape? Unnecessary to, to recheck there. It's not like the churn walker is going to be able to steal those camps away very easily. 
Yeah, exactly, but this is almost exactly the same play that Clash used against Queso in the very first game of the preseason Invitational. Now, they pick this Baptiste, the Grumpjaw, together, they pair them around and just move them between their topside jungle and the enemy topside jungle. Farm it out, get an experience advantage, and utilize the early game damage of Grumpjaw, and then just go aggressive. Okay, Mad Vagabond, really making Alex at uh, Viking's life hard here in the mid lane. Viking. We need to keep his farm up up against his opponent here. The Cracks currently coming ahead as far as gold is concerned. Top lane, Luger versus Solicitude is quite an interesting matchup. Both these hero melee both want to be fighting each other so close. So when you look at the experience lead that Solicitude already has over Luger, it's pretty huge. Yeah, and I want to touch on why that is. Now, of course, you're in a Catherine Baptiste lane setup. Like, Catherine's not going to push you in too quickly. Baptiste being able to visit it with Grumchor every so often and leave the lane in a fairly neutral position, then drop down into the enemy jungle, steal away the camps, get a little bit of that shared experience. And look, they're level six, both of them, three, five minutes. They can now swing around to mid lane and look to go aggressive with this Grumchor ultimate. Like, this is a very dangerous situation for Equinox to be in. This mid right here. And Equinox, can they survive is the real question. Keanu Nakoa diving on in, Vikings dead. Alex SS pulling the ball back. Here comes the fearsome shade, blocked up by Alex S. Kieran wants to go into Keanu Nakoa, but he's gonna get swallowed up and he's gonna get spat out. Keanu does go down, but so does uh, the, the Black Feather. Alex SS spreading the damage through Rising Lotus, but it just isn't enough. A two for one in the end for Rising yeah. Lotus. Overall Loga goes wants the to come way. in. Oh, Ooh, second phase. No man should be dead. The fun two and uh, Alex SS able to amplify that damage with the churn walker going over to equinox so two for two overall yeah a little bit of a backfire on the back end of that one didn't really wait out uh, or at least didn't assess the fact that the catherine was roaming down from the top side you can see i was gonna comment look at how catherine can't punish the baptiste roam but if that roam lasts long enough that catherine manages to run all the way down then yeah you can be fine you can pick up those kills on the back end of things and this is exactly what we were saying back and forth matchup is to be expected between these two teams that screaming indicates that Ghost Wing has arrived onto the Sovereign's Rise. And with Rising Lotus currently leading the way and pacing, it might be them to try and pick up that first objective of the game. Currently, Keanu Nico and Solicitude just being a threat. And Stefan too, still level five in his own jungle, gonna be in trouble. There's the stun from the Oblivion. A good block comes out from the Reflex. And that is going to be the Grumjaw ultimate diverted for now, but Stefantu once more knocked very low and his jungle continuously being stolen away. Yeah, now you know Alpha's stuck up there in the top side. You go right back to that enemy jungle. Blackfeather on the other side of the map getting caught as well. Let's see how Kieran's doing. He's actually trading back very effectively. Yeah, it is going to be cracks going very low. Keanu Nakoa chasing Stefantu under his own turret. Stefantu level six and uh, has his passive available, but he's completely <laughs> caught out as far as jungle is concerned. Fight breaks out in the mid lane. That is going to be Crax going down. Now it's going to be Luger trying to escape whilst Crax tries to finish off Solicitude. Oh my goodness. It's, it's fights all across the place, but it's going to be Stefan to end Solicitude. Uh, sorry, Keanu and Solicitude picking up kills onto Luger and Stefan to there. Very chaotic game from these two teams so far. Yeah, now Nomad Vagabond kind of caught out for himself trying to set up the fight for this Grumchor to come in. They've also got the Taka roaming up from the bottom side. Here comes the fight. Kieran wants to go in and Keanu Nakoa has to pee. Solar Storm rips through Nomad. Very tanky Tony here is going to be okay with that. Cracks back in lane. Scoreboard says 5-3. to three. First turret of the game will be taken up in the top side by Solicitude. Pushing the goal just into the lead for Rising Lotus. Yeah, that's now the difference maker between these two teams. We did just about see a little bit of that impact that the Churnwalker can have, Alex, with the double pullback. Now, if there's some more damage to follow up, that is basically going to mean two kills if that happens in any team fight. But look at how Solicitude and Keanu Nakoa are just taking over the entire top side. This is where I really like the Baptiste. You've given him a platform of experience and gold, the items, to be in a position to just constantly bring the fight. And that's where Rising Lotus are going to have to put a lot of stock for the rest of this game. Yeah, no, for sure. Rising Lotus now roaming down towards the bot side. Got to be five men there. Tensian can start the fight onto Kieran. Here comes Solicitude with that Oblivion. Does get blocked up, though. 
Maybe they turn heads towards Ghost Wing, or maybe they just uh, three men all the way to mid and set up a fight. Either way, it's Rising Lotus who continuously are making the moves. Yeah, for sure. Like, have you seen how quickly Baptiste does Ghost Wing when you build in weapon power and get a lead? This thing is crazy. Like, it's almost the same as like when you put a crawl in front of it. But again, Keanu Nakoa going against aggressive Ooh. mid lane just kind of tanks the tower. Not quite yeah. on the same page as Cracks by the looks of yeah, it. Yeah, a little unfortunate there because didn't really need to go aggressive. The, the mm. Ghost Wing had been taken. They could have set up a three-man dive in the mid lane, push that turret down. Are looking for Stefan to in the bot side, but he should be able to walk away. All this time, Luger's been left up in the top side and he's able to push his turret down. Remember, Tensian is going that crystal power uh, Tucker once more. So that Storm Crown really just helps with those objectives. Diving on into the Black Feather here. They're doing damage. Solicitude wants the fight. Under the turret, no, do they really want to be there? Stefantu driving forward. Fearsome Shade gets blocked up. Here comes the ultimate out of the alpha. A trade one for one so far. And Tensian will just peace out. Not going to follow that up anymore. But Stefantu, great catch. Prime Directive. I don't know if this Tucker can run. He's going to attempt it. Is Crystal Power. Great! Good Prime Directive him. catches him out. But Tensian's still running. And Stefantu can't do anything about it. He's got a turn now looking for the fight. Oh, a great dodge on the Prime Directive. Keeping himself alive for now. Fight in the mid lane as well i think that one's finally over let's turn mid cracks in trouble block comes through from nomad on that Catherine ultimate bubba beam but a boom vikings under a turret not where he wants to be and nomad's gonna try and follow it up this is messy but rising lotus pulling all the shots nomad trying to make the play solicitude finding a kill onto that alpha in the bot side and rising lotus still continuing his cracks on the back line with the oblivion puts that churn walker to sleep tensian comes in and starts to clean up but kieran's here trying to look for executes can he find them that's one for the black cover but he goes down quickly to tucker and now luger trying to run away as tension trying to get away from that churn walker luger should lose his life shortly uh, uh, storm guard ban uh, shield won't keep him alive for too long three kills go to rising lotus just the one traded for it and now group up in mid lane oh the fight went on so long the solicitude was right the way back now that tucker did just end up falling uh, on the back end of the fight, but look, you can just hear the Baptiste swinging away. That whole fight was so precarious between what looked to be maybe Equinox taking it in, in some certain portions of it, like that Alpha play in the bottom side, finding the blind uh, dash onto Alpha, uh, onto uh, Taka. Like that should have been a kill, but well outplayed by Temptation. Like this is just such a knife edge game back and forth between these two teams. It's only just under 2000 gold between the two of them. And they're gonna fight again. Oh wow, Viking's in a lot of trouble. He's going very low, but Nomad Vagabond in, he survived is the question. Yeah. He can walks away very happy. That's just gonna be that turn walker left for dead <laughs> as Alex SS and Viking lose their life in mid. No matter Vagabond just pops all of his items and goes, okay, I'm healing again, I'm all good. Solicitude making a move on the top side onto that tower. Is this gonna try and push it down? Luger can't clear the minions fast enough. Oh my god, Solicitude's a monster now. He's gonna sit up onto Luger here. Bashing away, has that fearsome shade available. Doesn't look like he's going to get the kill, but he's put the pressure on in the top side. And now what Rising Lows can do is really just continue to pressure across the map if they want to. Solicitude's continuously pushing down. Does look like Keanu Nakoa and the Vagabond hanging around that top side just in case. 12 to 7, and it's only a 3,000 gold lead, would you believe it? Solicitude currently battling it out. Where's the rest of his team? He's all by himself. Fearsome <laughs> Shade has to come out. Now he's just going to lose his life. Keanu Nakoa dives on in to a 5v1. And yeah, I think Nomad Vagabond makes the right call. See you later, alligator. That's a big mistake by Rising Lotus. Yeah, it feels like uh, Equinox looked at the map and said, okay, there's a Taki in the bottom lane, there's a Samuel in the mid lane, and there's two of them in the jungle. Let's just go kill him. And that was an easy five-man pickup. I mean, I know Solicitude feels very strong. He has himself the breaking point as a completed item, so these fights lasting a while benefits him, but it doesn't matter if it's three or two versus five. Like, you are going to lose that fight. Right now, it is Equinox trying to find that Ghost Wing. Nomad Vagabond's providing a little bit of trouble. 
Tension, he can steal this with a well-timed ultimate, but it's not going to be enough. Dives on in, Ghost Wing goes Equinox way, but the fight is breaking out, and Solis who's running on in. Silences for all, but Vikings left for dead. Stefanto trying to find the kill, gets popped before he can go into double his kill. ultimate. It's a double so triple far for that Batiste. Kill. Make it a triple kill, Solisa who's a monster. Going for more, can he get a quadra? Well, it will be stolen, but four kills over to Rising Lotus. That Ghost Wing attempt did not go well for Equinox. Oh, we've seen the Ghost Wing go back and forth between these teams in the close games. It's so dangerous to do it with the death timers so low, but it looked like it was such a good timing out of Equinox. It looked like they should have been able to get it down, but it was a just delayed enough fight out of Rising Lotus that once again, Solicitude comes into the fight. Temptation and Solicitude really just destroying the last portions of these two fights, and that's really what's giving Rising Lotus just this massive now lead in the game. It's still 4,000 gold between these two teams. It's not the most. It's going to take a Black Claw to separate the two of them, but certainly Rising Lotus are in a great pos great position. Oh, for sure. Solicitude has about 1,500 gold over his laning opponent. And currently, the person with the most code vi uh, gold Viking is behind his opponent, Cracks. And that's just due to the fact that Rising Lotus have been playing the map. They've been getting those global objectives where possible. Now Equinox are the ones to group mid. And there's going to be a turret push coming out of them. That turret should oh, go down. Oh, it's 5v4 in. though. Rising Lotus looking for it. It is. It's 5v4. Make that 5v3. And Equinox, they are in a bit of a trouble. Luga trying to run away. They're going the wrong direction. The room for good and fearsome shade will knock everyone back. Stefanji tries to dive on in. Viking trying to get away. Good. Ultimate comes out of Alpha, but she will pop very quickly. And I think that might just be the end of the Vine. As Viking gets died by Kiana Nakoa, he should go down. So shall Luger in just a second, you would feel. It's going to be an ace coming through from Rising Lotus just as the Black Core spawns. Yeah, right in time. Get that regeneration. Head over there. Push the lanes back out and make sure you can secure it for yourselves. And Rising Lotus did a pretty good job of splitting up and separating away from a lot of the AoE damage that was gonna come out we saw uh, viking try and reposition try and get himself into a spot where maybe he could just output more damage try and get a little bit more but it wasn't to be rising lotus just able to spread out take the fight for themselves and now they're gonna spread themselves a little thin here sending grumpjaw down to the bottom lane is a tad risky if equinox can get to the black claw that was a nice attempt at a snipe there but it's actually way too quick Grumjaw has to back away, concede a little bit of room. Now you allow the mid lane push, potentially push out the top lane as well. You don't want to be playing on three lanes at this point. It would be too easy for them to take a fight, but this game is all Rising Lotus. Yeah, it looks like they're splitting up a 1-4 setup with a Solicitude pushing down that top side. Here's the Black Claw burning down the turret and Equinox is grouping up. It's going to be a 5v5 fight starting up. Fearsome Shade knocking two to the side and Rising Lotus quick disengage to make sure they're not in too much of a trouble. Alex SS trying to escape whilst Nomad Vagabond front lines, but he will 4-4 it. Captains are now both down, a one-for-one -one trade. That turret will 4, exposing that armory and OD Stefanto's gone down without using his ultimate. Solicitude diving on in. That's going to be a double kill now for Cracks on that Samuel. Armory should fall very shortly as Keanu Nakoa potentially in a bit of a bind. Trying to find the damage. Can't quite do it. His team's just taking down the Vein Crystal. And Equinox can't really do anything about it. It's going to be a kill going to Solicitude as Viking. Last man standing trying to do his best, but he can't. And the Vein Crystal will fall to Black Claw's punches. Rising Lotus are going to find their first first win of the European VPL. A good win out of Rising Lotus as well. While it was a close game for the majority, a well-timed fight right as Black Claw is spawning using the advantages they'd built up with this Baptiste. We talked about the baptiste Grumchal combination in the early game and how you can accelerate his game through. Well, there exactly is that carry Baptiste. You saw it go off. Taka was doing pretty good as well. Just too much damage at the end.